For those of you not deep in the Pokemon lore, in the Pokemon universe there are these small devices that Pokemon trainers carry around with them. They're called Pokedexes and they're used to identify Pokemon in the wild. All you have to do is hold it up to some unknown creature and it'll be like, hey, this is a Ditto or a Charizard or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, there's a few traits here that I want to cover in our real world adaptation. It's got to look similar, that's a given. It needs to be able to recognize most Pokemon in most situations. So in the real world, that could be showing it a picture from the anime or holding it up to a toy, etc. And finally, it needs to be able to talk like the Pokedex in the show in a similar voice and cadence. Charmander. A flame burns on the tip of its tail from birth. It is said that a Charmander dies if its flame ever goes out. So those are our kind of three goals for this project. In some versions of the anime, there is more functionality in the Pokedex, but we're gonna keep it to the hardest part, which is figuring out how to recognize Pokemon visually and get that voice right. So with those goals, let's go sketch out a plan. We know the dimensions of this and the form factor are gonna be pretty much the same as the cartoon, so we can take inspiration from them for the case design. I'll simplify the design a bit. I'll add a hole that goes all the way through. That'll be a viewfinder, so you can aim it at whatever Pokemon you're trying to identify. We'll add a screen inside a bezel and add a couple buttons for the little bit of input we will need to do. I'll print the majority of this out of a red filament and then the bezel and maybe the buttons will be done in beige. On the inside, this case is gonna hide a bunch of electronics. We'll have the screen in the center, obviously. Up top, we'll have the camera which faces towards the back. There'll be a USB port on the top left. We'll have a speaker on the bottom right and the bottom left will have the battery. We'll also need a small board to actually drive that speaker. The camera we're using up front is actually a microcontroller as well. It's a Seed Studio Zhao ESP32 S3 Sense Board, which is uh, the camera part, the sense part. For the two buttons, I have these small breakout boards, which are just a clicky button on a PCB that makes it easy to mount, so we'll use those. For the software, we'll call out to ChatGPT to analyze whatever we're looking at. We'll figure out how to ask it to tell us what Pokemon it is. We'll check that against the Pokemon API, which is uh, just a database of Pokemon information. Then we're gonna use a service called PlayHT to do a voice clone of the original Pokedex voice. That'll let it actually talk to us. And then we'll use a little bit of Firebase, also known as Google Cloud, to support some of the back end for this. And that's our whole plan. I mean, you know, we'll see how close we stick to it, but uh, th that's, that's the plan. There's a bit of a chicken and the egg problem here. I can't start 3D modeling the case until I know where the components are gonna be, but I don't know where the components are gonna be because they might interfere with the structural elements of the case. So to get started, I just went ahead and made a big red rectangle, printed that out, and then started laying out components in real life, and we're just gonna iterate on that. For this screen, I'm going with this grayscale OLED screen. I do actually have a color screen, but in my heart, the Pokedex is a black and white screen. I know the real one in the show isn't, but the toy from the 90s was, so I, I'm going with that because it's nostalgic for me. You'll notice I'm being very delicate with these screens. They are very fragile. Ask me how I know. I broke one. So I'm just gonna keep this off to the side until we finish doing this part of the build. Once everything's kinda laid out, I'll go back into the model, add screw holes, supports for mounting stuff, that kind of thing. The first thing I wanna wire up is the part that I understand the least about, which is the audio. Whoosh. I'm using an I2S amplifier board. It takes a digital signal and turns it into the analog signal needed to drive the speaker. I followed a tutorial on how to wire it up and then copied over some code and we have... With that working, we can move on to the second scariest part of this build for me, which is the front panel screen and buttons. If we look at our original uh, blueprint, you can see that this piece would be the bezel and the holder for the buttons, and it kind of fits under a top layer. So it won't look like one single piece of plastic once it's all assembled. Keen-eyed viewers might notice that the real life piece is red and the drawing is beige. That is because changing filament is a pain, so I will reprint it later once I'm sure it's not gonna need any other adjustments. I also printed this little bracket that has four screws, three screws to keep from breaking another screen. Now you will notice I'm actually using the broken screen here and I'm gonna keep using it for the majority of the build because I was scared of breaking my good one. It kind of half works, enough that we can test stuff, test the wiring, and then when we're almost done, I will swap this to the good screen. It's already starting to look a lot like a Pokedex and if we pull over the base, we can see how these are gonna stack on top of each other. No. Yes, yes. The screen is driven via I squared C over what's called the Stemma QT connector. I had to solder on a cable to the Xiao to connect to that. And you can kind of see how this is gonna lay and wrap around in the case. However, I'll pull it out of the case so we can power it up and check that the screen is indeed working. And yeah, for this being the broken screen, this looks great. You can see a little bit of like the pixel separating. I think it's like missing every other scan line or something, but totally usable for testing, looks great. 
I did some other soldering, including leads for the battery and the USB port. Then I can go and start mounting things in the actual case. I decided to switch speakers. This one's a little lower profile, sounds about the same. So that's gonna save us some room. It's also sticky, which unlike most sticky things is, is convenient for us. Off camera, I also soldered up the two buttons on the breakouts that we talked about. So now we can take the front panel and mount those in their spot. And we'll end up with nice little clicky buttons. Everything is sitting pretty well, so we can actually try to close the case for the first time. I had to make a couple tweaks to the case, but it feels pretty good. It, it closes and everything lines up well. I ended up taking the door off once I knew it fit, but now I can take this, I'll replace the bezel with the right color, put the door back on all off screen, but for the moment, let's talk about the software. The vast majority of the software flowed just fine. I'd look up a tutorial for the part, copy it over, modify it for my needs. So the screen worked right away, the Wi-Fi worked right away. So I figured at this point, let's get us some real life Pokemon to test with. And that means we're going on a drive. Skirt. And it is almost lunchtime. Skirt. Skirt. All right, so I got a few cocoa plush and then a little uh, plastic piplup to test with. The electronics are definitely done. We can seal this up and, you know, never open it again, hopefully. This little back panel that holds the camera in place is really nice because it lets me remove that panel to access the SD card that's under the camera. And that was really important because right around this point, everything started going wrong. Uh, I had gotten to the point where the picture would take, it would upload it, it would ask ChatGPT, it would get the Pokemon name back. But once I went to actually display the Pokemon on the screen and do the voice synth, uh, things just broke down. Going on PlayHT to set up the voice cloning was actually really, really easy. I just went on YouTube, found a clip of the original Pokedex voice, brought that down, cut it to a little WAV file that just was the Pokedex speaking, and then fed that in, and it, it does a pretty good job. This is a Pokedex speaking. But once I went to actually pull that down, like use the REST API to generate the voice on demand, things just, they went haywire. The device started crashing, or it would not boot at all. Sometimes it would boot and then show things like like this. Like what, it, it, that's supposed to be a word on the bottom, my man. It is not a word. And this just started days of debugging and trying to get this thing to be stable. So let's talk about the five worst bugs I had to figure out. Number five, loading bitmaps crashes the Pokedex. I downloaded from the Pokemon API images of every Pokemon, and then I put them on the SD card to display on the screen. However, uh, doing that would crash. I don't know why, but I ended up manually reading the bitmap byte by byte and drawing each pixel. Uh, but that took a while to figure out because I've never manually read a bitmap before. Number four, audio from PlayHT had a weird tick, 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 tick noise. If you look at this waveform, which is one of the files downloaded from the API to the Pokedex, you can see these spikes at a very consistent interval. I don't know what they are, but they were very audible. They were a ticking noise. So I was looking at the data to try to figure out why it was corrupt. And in the hex editor, I randomly found this number 1000. And there were a bunch of these at a consistent interval, and it just looked wrong to me. So I added another 1,000 randomly, and sure enough, opening up the waveform again, we can see that spike. So those are what is causing that ticking. Why they're there, I don't know, but I could write code to strip out the ticks, uh, the 1,000s, as it downloaded the file. Number three, splitting strings crashes the Pokedex. The response from ChatGPT would be Pokemon name colon description. I needed to get the name and that would crash it. And it turned out I was actually crashing it way earlier. I made a buffer too small uh, when I made the URL. That overflowed later and caused the crash. So I had to make that buffer bigger, but it was really hard to figure that out. Number two, PSRAM causes crash. I had this big setup function that's set up like the SD card, the camera, etc. And randomly at one point it just started crashing. I found out I had turned on the PSRAM to try to fix the previous issue, and if I turned it off, then the SD card and the camera worked again. If I left it on, it would just crash randomly. And the number one most annoying bug is that it still just freezes sometimes. You know, I tried really hard to figure out what exactly was going on and get this thing perfect, but I think honestly, I think I need to just rewrite the whole code, start over, structure things differently with what I've learned. But I think we're just gonna go with this and you know, next project, I'll, I'll learn a bit and we'll do a bit better. Okay, let's actually try this. Now, I, I don't think it's gonna work with this plushie. I think the closer it is to the cartoon or the video game rendering, uh, the better it does, but we will try this plushie and see what happens. Nope, Imme immediately wrong. Nope, nope, please, please stop talking. Okay, let's try what it might actually get. 
this uh, this Piplup, it looks really close to a drawing or, you know, like I said, a render from the game. So I'm pretty optimistic that it will get this one. Uh, I don't think that's how you say Piplup, but, uh, you know, it... it it knew, it knows it. The voice, uh, the diction needs work. Okay, batting fifty percent right now. Let us try an image on a screen and see how it does. Like electric type Pokemon known for its long, lightning bolt shaped tail and ability to store electricity in its cheeks. Right, you was the evolved form of Pikachu. Okay, uh, it, you know, again, diction needs work, and it kind of changed voices halfway through, but you know what? It's a talking, seeing Pokedex. I think I set out to do what I accomplished. You know, I would love if I could have time to rewrite the code and, and kind of start part of it over, but I, I think that's the nature of these projects, right? Like, they're not always going to be exactly uh, perfect, but I, I had a lot of fun building it, even though it was very stressful uh, and difficult, but I think this came out great. I'm really proud of it. If you enjoyed watching, you know, make sure to hit the video with a like, leave a comment down below. And I also just launched YouTube memberships. Uh, I'm going to be doing commentaries on my old videos where I talk about what I've learned or how I would do things differently. So keep an eye out for that. Join if you want to support the channel. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.